Hi, today I'm going to talk briefly about chest tubes, how they work, and the components of them. This, this de containment device right here has three different components to it. It actually has the containment device where all the blood and air runs into. Then you have the tube that delivers all the blood and air. And then you have the suction chamber, which is responsible for providing negative pressure, which we'll touch up on here in a second. As you can see, there's five different components to this chest drainage device, A through E. We're going to go over each of them just very briefly. A is a dry suction control, and what this does is it allows you to change how much suction you want on your device to provide negative pressure to the patient so that none of the blood and air runs back into the patient. B is your water seal, and C is your air leak monitor. This lets you know if there's a compromised system where there has either continuous bubbling, intermittent bubbling, or no bubbling at all. And bubbling is okay as long as it's intermittent bubbling with forced expiration or coughing. If it's continuous bubbling in this, you'll see bubbling come up to one or come up to two or three. But if it's continuous bubbling, that means there's a compromised system where there's an air leak and that's when you have to change your drain, you have to change your uh, device, your, sorry, not your device, change your dressing or change your, uh, you may have to change the tube if there's a compromised leak. And D is your containment area. So this is where actually all the drainage goes into. This is divided by one milliliter per tick, while over here it is 10 milliliters per tick. And after every shift and after every uh, time that the drainage needs to be assessed, every 15 minutes after the chest was first implemented, then after four, for, do that for four hours, then after that you have to do it hourly for the first 24 hours, then after that it's every eight hours. And E is your, is your suction monitor bellow. And what this does, it's kind of interesting, is that when your suction's on, it lets you know how much suction is being applied. So it needs to be at this arrow. And if it's at that arrow, then that lets you know that there's adequate suction um, into the device to provide negative pressure.